guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Tess and I'm an elementary school teacher living in Atlanta with my husband Samir and our three feline friends, Baby Lobster, Pungy, and Huey. Today we're making s'mores cookies which are sure to become an instant favorite with your family. Be sure to check out the description box for a link to the full recipe from Mark Murphy at Food Network. So let's jump right into it. The first thing you're going to want to do is get your oven preheated to 350 degrees. And while that gets heated up, you're going to start by combining one and a quarter cups of flour with one cup of graham cracker crumbs and a half teaspoon each of salt and baking soda. Now I skip over the salt because I always use salted butter when I bake. I just think it makes everything taste a little bit better. But if you are using unsalted butter, definitely opt to add the salt in. Once you've got the flour and graham cracker mixture all combined, you can just set that aside and then you're going to grab a stick and a half of butter and get that into a mixer with a half a cup of regular granulated sugar and a half a cup of brown sugar. You're going to get the mixer turned on and just get this beat together. You want to cream those ingredients together until it's nice and smooth. you're going to beat together one egg with two tablespoons of maple syrup and one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Now I just eyeball my vanilla extract. I like vanilla so it's okay if you go a little bit over. Once you get that beat together then you're just going to pour that into your mixer and get your mixer going again. Once the egg mixture is fully combined with the butter and sugar, I'm going to slowly start incorporating the flour and graham cracker. And now for the best part, my friends. I'm going to get one and three quarter cups of chocolate or about 10 ounces of chocolate chopped up. Usually I just use an entire bag of chocolate chips. I really prefer dark chocolate chips. I think that really goes a long way with the marshmallow that you get that sweet, salty, bitter thing going on. But I ran out of chocolate chips and didn't have enough for my Instacart run. So I'm just chopping up some chocolate that we had lying around the house and throwing that in. Feel free to do that too. And then you're just gonna keep that mixer on and get that fully incorporated. All right guys, the hair is going up and it is time to get these bad boys in the oven. You'll notice that my cookie sheets are lined with silicone mats. Those are called sill pats. They do the same job as foil or parchment paper. It's just gonna make for some easy release when you take the cookies out of the oven. You'll also notice that I'm only putting six cookies on each cookie sheet. They are gonna spread a little bit and I don't wanna overcrowd them and mess with the evenness of the baking. So they're gonna go into the oven for four minutes and then I'm gonna take them out and then we'll be ready for some marshmallows. But in the meantime, let's get some cleaning done.
it is marshmallow time. So after about four to five minutes, you're gonna pull them out. You'll notice that the cookies have started to spread a little bit. You're gonna plop the top with some of those marshmallows, just lightly push them into the dough. And then you're gonna throw them back into the oven for nine to 10 minutes. Being sure to just kind of keep your eye on them so that they don't burn. Okay guys, so I wanted to let you know something that happened with the marshmallows. I only make these with like jumbo marshmallows and then I just cut the marshmallows into pieces. And this time I use the little baby ones that you put in your hot cocoa. And it looks like they kind of disintegrate into the cookie a little bit. So I wonder if they're just a little bit too delicate for that much heat, they're too small. So I would definitely recommend getting either a regular size or those like really jumbo ones that are like this and cutting them into quarters or so. And those are much more substantial. You'll get a lot more of this browning effect and it'll stay. Marshmallow snafu or not, these cookies are a crowd pleaser. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you'll be notified when my next video hits. Happy cleaning and baking, my friends.